So we've all seen the argument in recent times from anti-SJWs complaining about Disney inserting SJW feminist politics into the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Now, of course, with a lot of people like that, what they don't actually understand is that the franchises and films they love have always been inherently political. And Star Wars is absolutely no different, especially the Star Wars films by George Lucas. The original films were inspired by the NLF, known as the Viet Cong, and the North Vietnamese struggle against America in the Vietnam War while the second trilogy of films was more about how authoritarianism and fascism can rise in a liberal democracy, and of course they were created during the War on Terror, so the parallels with Chancellor Palpatine, George Bush, the Clone Wars and the Iraq War are pretty clear to see. Now these were obviously inspired by the politics of the franchise's creator. Now I'm not going to sit here and say George Lucas is some great socialist because how can a billionaire really be a socialist? George Lucas is now worth four billion dollars and he was worth two billion dollars before he sold Star Wars to Disney. If I'm going to be fair to him he does put a lot of money back into charity but I don't think that's a reason to excuse his excess wealth. Sure he made it off selling a property he created and developed but at the same time I don't necessarily think billionaires should exist because of either the power they have over everyone else or the methods which they have accumulated their wealth. Now to start with, we're gonna talk about the original trilogy, mainly A New Hope, but some of the other ones as well. And there was a really interesting clip of George Lucas speaking to James Cameron about sci-fi films, and they both discuss the politics of the original Star Wars. Now George Lucas started writing the original Star Wars script in 1973, during the time of the Vietnam War. Remember 1973 is the last year of direct US involvement, but it is also the height of the Watergate scandal. George Lucas was actually friends of some other prominent directors, namely Steven Spielberg and Francis Ford Coppola. Coppola would go on to be famous for directing Apocalypse Now, but Coppola actually asked George Lucas to direct the film, and when Lucas dropped out, Coppola didn't speak to him for many years. So keep this in mind when you watch this clip between Lucas and James Cameron. In school, I was of the, I don't know, angry young man. Student. Sure, you were a so, rebel. Uh, I come out of anthropology. Yeah. So my focus is social systems. Right. And in science fiction, you got two branches. One is science. Yeah. And the other is social. Right. I'm much more of the 1984 kind of guy. Sure. I am THX with the spaceship guy. Yeah. The spaceship I got into spaceships out of cars. Yeah. I love cars, I love going fast. Going fast. So I like spaceships. Yeah. But it isn't the science aliens and all that kind of stuff that I get focused on. It's the it's the how do the people react to all those things. And yeah. how do they accommodate them? Yeah. So that's the part that really fascinates me and I'm interested in. You did something very interesting with Star Wars, if you think about it. The good guys are the rebels. They're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire. I think we call those guys terrorists today. We call them Mujahideen, we call them Al-Qaeda. When I did it, they were Viet Cong. Exactly. So yeah. were you thinking of that at the time? Yes. So it was a very anti-authoritarian, very kind of 60s, against the man kind of thing, yeah. nested or, deep inside of or, a, a fantasy. Or a colonial, you know, we're fighting the largest empire in the world. Right. And we're just a bunch of hayseeds in coonskin hats that don't know right. nothing. That's right. And it was the same thing with the Vietnamese. Yep. The irony of that one is in in both of those, the little, the little guys won. Right. And the big, highly technical, in the, empire, the English Empire, right? English the English Empire, empire. the American Empire, yeah. lost. Yeah, that was the whole point. But that's a classic: us not profiting from the lesson of history. Because you look at the inception of this country, and it's very—it's a very noble fight of the underdog against the massive empire. You look at the situation now, where America is so proud of being the biggest economy, the most powerful military force on the planet. It's become the empire, in the from the perspective well, of a lot of people around it the was world. Was the empire during the Vietnam War? And, but we never learned, you know, from England or Rome or, you know, a dozen other 
Empire, empires, empires that fall. went on for hundreds of years or yeah. sometimes thousands of years. We never got it. We right. never said, well, wait, 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 wait. This isn't the right thing to do. And we're still struggling with it. So that clip is, of course, very, very interesting. Now, like I said, I don't believe George Lucas can really be a socialist as he's a billionaire. But it's interesting to hear a guy like this describe America as an empire specifically. Of course, that is the correct terminology to use when you're talking about America. But a lot of Americans don't see it that way. Even though the original America only had a small portion of what would become the United States, how do people think they conquered the rest of that territory? How do people think Hawaii and Puerto Rico became part of the United States? What do they think the Philippines was to the United States? And of course, Vietnam, even though not a directly controlled US territory, was firmly in bed with the US and part of their fight against communism. So I find it interesting that George Lucas both describes America's fight in Vietnam as part of a fight of the American Empire, but he also speaks positively about the Viet Cong, so much so he bases his hero struggle in the original films about the Viet Cong struggle. And of course, if you know anything about Vietnamese history, America actually promised Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh that they could lead an independent Vietnam if they helped America fight the Japanese. Of course they did that, and when Ho Chi Minh declared independence in 1945, he actually quoted the American Declaration of Independence. When things were kicking off against the French, he actually wrote to Harry Truman saying, our fight right now is the same fight that George Washington fought for the Americans back in the late 1700s. So their struggles are pretty parallel, but of course like Lucas is saying there, the American Empire couldn't accept the struggle of the Vietnamese. Now people criticize Lucas a lot and they say even though he makes these comparisons he doesn't really delve too deep into them. Are we meant to take that the US are as bad as the Empire? You know things like the Death Star, things like torture devices, is that meant to be taken on face value? We don't really know but Lucas does explore everything a bit more in his prequel trilogy. Now People got quite bored with the prequels because they delve a lot more into the politics of Star Wars. Growing up with these films, I never really had a problem with that. And now I'm going back as an adult, I appreciate it a lot more because Lucas's whole point with the prequels is about how fascism and authoritarianism can rise in a liberal democracy. Now I'm just gonna read some quotes he said at the time in 2005 when Revenge of the Sith was actually released in theaters. This article states, Lucas, you see, originally conceived Star Wars while many Americans were questioning leadership during Richard Nixon's presidency. Lucas says it was really about the Vietnam War and that was the period where Nixon was trying to run for a second term, which got me thinking historically about how do democracies get turned into dictatorships? Because democracies aren't overthrown, they're given away. Now the Star Wars series has wrapped up while George Bush's presidency is triggering questions about America's role in the world, its use of military might, and the tolerance of political dissent. In Revenge of the Sith, Chancellor Palpatine exploits war fears to turn the Republic into an empire ruled by him alone. As Senator Padme, played by Natalie Portman, watches Palpatine consolidate his power, amid a rapturous Senate, she comments disgustedly, this is how liberty dies with thundering applause. I didn't expect that to be true, Lucas said, but it gets truer every day, unfortunately. So again, people sort of think Lucas kind of walked into the prequels and the themes of it, but I don't think he did. Of course, the stories for the prequels were written back in the 70s. Mace Windu was the primary character. Lucas, of course, dropped things like the Clone Wars in the original Star Wars, so he always had this in his head. But of course, the rise of Chancellor Palpatine in the Republic is akin to someone like Adolf Hitler. So Chancellor Palpatine obviously manufactures a political attack from the Jedi on the democracy of the Senate. This can be seen akin to something like the Reichstag fire in Nazi Germany, which was an event manufactured by Hitler, which gave him an excuse to seize absolute power. But of course, there are broader points in the prequels. For example, the Jedi think they're always doing good, the Republic think they're always fighting for good, but they employ a bunch of slave soldiers to carry out their war for them. They of course invade and fight any planet which joins the Separatists. Now, the Separatists are largely painted as this evil group, but if you watch the Clone Wars series, which Lucas was heavily involved in, you see a bit more nuance to it and you see some actual 
good separatists which actually just have a problem with the Republic. But I think the point of this Clone Wars is that the Republic lose themselves in the war and start justifying the unjustifiable. Things like using the clone soldiers, things like Jedis who are meant to be these monks of peace being generals on the battlefield, but from their perspective they're never losing their morals, but to a lot of other people Jedi are supposed to protect but now they've become warmongers. So of course America has always been an imperialist state, but it had a vision of itself in the 1990s which it was this beacon for freedom, it was this beacon for prosperity, it had defeated the authoritarianism of the Soviet system, and now it was the end of history, as Fukuyama puts it. But with things like the war on terror, it slowly started giving permission to the Bush administration to things they would never think they would be okay with. And many abuses of security, of power, were done in the Bush years, whether that is the Patriot Act or Guantanamo Bay. And I do really feel these sorts of things really influenced George Lucas with his prequel films. Now, like I said, you do have to go a bit more into the Clone Wars series to get a more well-rounded perspective on the war and the clones. I've seen people complain about George Lucas actually using the clones as a positive thing, where using a slave army for war is seen as more like a good thing. But if you really watch the show, and if you finish season 7 lately, the tragedy of the Clone Wars is that all these clones who were sentient, free-thinking human beings were used as political pawns and then discarded after the war and brainwashed to commit horrible atrocities. So when people complain about Star Wars being woke, Star Wars putting SJW politics into it, does it get more political than having a commentary of the US political system as it descended into war, inspired by the US's own war on terror? Does it get more political than making the heroes of your original story inspired by the NLF guerrilla army and the North Vietnamese who took on the US army in Vietnam? Not only does it not get more political, it's obviously coming from a left-wing place. The same left-wing politics all these so-called Star Wars fans despise. Now, of course, these people just don't have much of a political understanding. They just really have a problem with the representation of women, of more ethnic minorities, seen in their backlash to sequel trilogy characters like Finn, like Rose and Rey. And why Rise of Skywalker is so bad is that J.J. Abrams wrote it like he was one of these people who hated the so-called politics of the series and the sequel trilogy. He wrote it like he was a butthurt anti-SJW Redditor who just wanted to give all these crybaby fans everything they wanted. Now I wonder how Star Wars would have been received if it was made in the age of the internet. But make no mistake, the series is extremely political and I think it's deliberate. Now I want to play one last clip of George Lucas talking about his own personal politics. The legal system, the, the financial system, the political system, they're all based on winner take all. But he, that's not a good society. That's not a good culture. That's a culture that is built out of a caveman mentality where the guy with the biggest hammer wins. And that's would, not a good society. And you want to see a society that is defined how? By everybody comes out? By compassion. They're saying, we care about everybody in our society. And what we want to do is what's best for everybody in this society. And we want to build you, the best society where everybody gets the best possible life they can possibly have. And would you call this democracy? Would you call this um, social, socialism? Would you call this some other ism that we don't have I'd a name for? It common sense. So of course that clip, Lucas seems a bit hesitant to really get into his politics, but what he's advocating there is, is what you hear many socialists advocate for, you know, a society based on compassion and not about winner takes all not about people crushing each other to get to the top of the system. So it's clear George Lucas has decent politics. It obviously comes from a left-wing perspective. Of course, like I said, he's a billionaire. So I wouldn't say he's a real socialist, but again, his politics are good. And it always amazes me with people like George Lucas, with people like Hideo Kojima, that they make these works of art that are so political, and it's not even too hard to see the politics, but people don't understand it in the slightest, and then start to get mad about politics ruining things like their films or video games, when these mediums have always been inherently political, and some of the best pieces of art in these mediums 
have been the most political and Star Wars does not escape that. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please leave a like, maybe subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter. That is my main one, but also my Facebook and also my Instagram. Please check out my subreddit, which is r slash The Cavernacle, and my personal reddit, which is u slash Tommy Cahill 1995. Check out my Patreon in the description. Check out my WordPress. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.